The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 30th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877 927 -6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. you got the Dow up 322 points, nearly 1% move. The S&P is flat. The Nasdaq is off 111, a 7 tenths percent of a move to the downside, where the Russell's up 7 tenths or 12 points. The semis are off a little over 1%. That's a 41 point move to the downside. Trend is up 105. We've got a mixed bag. The mix continues. We've got gold down 8 bucks and silver's up 12 pennies. Light tree crude is off a buck. Natural gas is down a penny. 30 year treasury is down 17 ticks, printing out at 116.28. Leading the charge dollar wise to the upside. We've got Regenerant Pharmaceuticals up 19 bucks, a little over 2%. Salesforce, 15 bucks, over 6%. Immune, Immune Ogen up 13 bucks, 82% move there. United Health up nearly 12 or 2%. Our Genix SC is up 2%. That's a $9 move. Our shakers are led by Broadcom. AVGO is a ticker symbol, down $21, a little over 2%. Synopsis off 20 bucks. Three and six tenths percent Mercado Libre, Libre down 22 bucks, over 1%. MicroStrategy, 15 bucks to the downside. That's a 3% move in NVIDIA, up 2.5%, $12.40 to the downside as we speak right now. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at, so what do we want to look at? Let's go take a look at, first let's take a look at what I consider to be maybe the three most important charts for us. What the heck happened there? Okay, so about that. Uh, the three most important charts. Oh, maybe I've got a caller, and we that's and we would. Oops, that's not it. What the heck? Give me a second here, folks. We do have a caller on the line, and so with call ahead seating, let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. I didn't want to mess up your mojo. I just thought I'd get you early and ask the question about uh, Franco Nevada. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But, yes, yeah, it's all going well. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So, Franco, Nevada, this morning it's up two pennies, uh, trading out at 113.98 as we speak right now. Uh, what are you doing? How can I best help you? If you don't mind, we could, I guess, bring up, it's probably show best maybe on the weekly or the daily. Uh, there's definitely a AB equals CD. Uh, I'm taking the A point uh, would be May 8th. It's like a 161.25 high. Yeah. And then my B point I've got is October 4th. Mm hmm It's at about 127. Yeah. And then the C point, it had a 382 retracement up to the 18th of October. And then it kind of blew away that swing point, that, that B point with big volume. Sure. I think it had like 700 and something thousand shares initially, and then it broke it with like 2.5 million shares. So it's a confirmed AB equals CD. My, my question, I guess, would be uh, 
And I think the projections around 108. But if you could go back on the chart, I uh, believe it's February of 2021. There's a low there of around 105. Does that seem like something that you know is potentially an area to go to? Or anything on your charts that would kind of indicate some area of a bottom that would make sense? Sure. Okay. So first thing, um, and we'll take a look at the weekly. You mentioned the weekly is maybe being a good place to start. So when we take a look at Franco Nevada. I have a swing point that I'm looking at from the week that ended September 30th. That's September 30th of 2022. And that swing point did volume of 3.2 million shares. So far, it's Thursday, just early trading, 3.2 million. So price is moving into that swing point, Brent, with volume. And I, if it closes below the high of that swing, which is 121.36, odds favor, that's a likely outcome. Then what that suggests to you and I is price should go target that low, which is 109.70. So on a weekly basis, now I don't have any other kind of bottom signals out there. I do see the different A to B equals CD patterns. They apply on the weekly time frame chart as well. Uh, and so that would then say that this would need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. But since it is trading into that swing point, perhaps next week what we get is a test of that low. Again, that low being 109.70, does it on less than 3.2 million shares. Then you have a test and rejection of a, of a, of a swing low. Then what I would probably do is look to the daily time frame chart for some type of uh, sign of strength. Does it come off the bottom? Does it come off the bottom with a sign of strength? If it does, and you buy that first pullback. That could be one way to trade it. The other way to trade it is if prices uh, test and rejects that swing low on the weekly chart out there, what's going on in the daily time frame chart? Maybe it's just simply a bottom pattern. Right now, uh, other than the A to B equals CD pattern, no reason for me to reshow that. You, you identified that very well. Uh, there's also wave number seven that we're trading into right now. So there's a potential for a wave seven low. In order for that to occur, folks, we need to see a higher low. So the earliest that could happen would be by the end of said uh, trading session tomorrow. We also have a Rosemontum indicator signal that's triggered, and that requires a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom out there. Can't say whether that's going to happen today. Doesn't seem likely, uh, but that's what I would be waiting for. So you got the wave seven bottom in the daily to pay attention to. Does that identify the bottom? Don't know because we don't have a confirmed pattern there. But on a weekly chart, I see price pulling back into that swing. Now, this is the end of the month out here. And so let's take a look at that same swing point in September of 2022. And the volume there, Brent, is 13.1 million shares. And so far for this month, we're pulling down into that level, 16.3 million shares. So all of this supports the idea that Franco Nevada is not uh, done heading lower out there. The only word of caution is that certainly that uh, wave seven bottom on the uh, daily time frame chart. If I peek at the 30 minute time frame chart, we got a wave seven bottom there. We've seen any kind of a signal of a bottom on a 30 minute chart. And I really don't have that just yet. Right now, I've got prices trading with inside its profile with resistance being 114.49. Brett, does that add the information you were looking for to assist? Uh, or is there something else that you were looking at that I need to pull the charts even back further to look at? I think that's it for the white background charts. I, I um, personally have just been trying to be patient with this. It's had little bounces and things that have, you know, little head fake kind of stuff. I just, I think I need to- It has, yeah. Uh, have it finish off that pattern that I'm watching, at least that I, I indicated to you. Hey, Brett, do me a favor. Just hold on. Just hold on. Uh, if you can, we're going to a hard break here. I'd like to finish up sure. that conversation. We'll be back in just a few moments with Brent. He's in Martinez, California. And Stevie, he's in Delray Beach, Florida. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. C C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at the stock charts here for Franco Nevada. FNB is a ticker symbol. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, I didn't want to have you just be cut off there by the uh, by uh, going to a commercial. So, um, so at this stage here, your thought process is to wait for your price target to be hit. What's your price target again? Was that the one eleven ninety six area or? Um, I believe if the one to one on that. Uh, one I described would be around 108. Maybe you can put on your black background charts and see what it projects uh, okay, out okay. to. But All I right, think so that's what it was. Okay, yeah. Give me a second here. We'll switch over to that set of screens. So I had picked up my black background charts. It picked up a little bit slightly different A to B equals C pattern. So there's more than one that's out here. Uh, so I'll use that same A point. And I believe you came down to the low in October of 2023. And that would be a B point as well. And then the C point up here for October of 16. And that would be 108.80. Absolutely. But there's another A to B equals CD pattern that can be used out here, Brent. And that would be, and I'm looking at the weekly chart just to make it easier. We could find a bunch of different A to B equals CD patterns on the daily chart. But that was starting with your high in May. And uh, so either you can take the swing low from August of 2023 on the weekly base. That was August the 14th week that began or the one that you're using, which is October 2nd of 2023. Um, either way, the, the the more conservative one, uh, it's already achieved the one, basically the one 1.272 level. And I would say the next bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom. And yes, your price projection level is 108.80. And folks, both A to B equals CD patterns are correct out there. You just simply draw that in, be paying attention to what you're looking for to confirm those patterns. And I suggest that you take a look at bullish reversal candles or bearish reversal candles, depending on whether you're looking for a top or bottom, and then obviously integrate the other time frame charts to see what they're doing, much like the monthly chart. Now, the monthly chart here, we can see that price has held one trend line and it's crushed through another trend line. What's more important is that price is trading below the bottom of a bullish structured daily profile. And that says a close below 115.66 day suggests lower price. That just adds to Brent's idea of waiting and being patient out there. So. Um, Brent, is there is there any additional information or anything else that we, you'd like to look at? Uh, I would just uh, let you know that that's something that might buoy it a little bit is there's going to be a it goes, uh, has an X date of next Wednesday uh, for a dividend of 34 cents. So that okay. might be something that 
people want to try to, you know, partake in, and so they, you know, it might help it a little bit. But I just, yeah, I'm going to try to be patient with it. So far, it's it's worked, and I'll be looking, like you said, for that that bullish reversal candle. And and yeah, it sounds like we've have a, a basic completion of one, and and just yeah, we'll see what level it gets to. Absolutely. We're in the ballpark, and it's going to yes. try to be a little patient. Yes, yes, and uh, tomorrow morning. I've got on my uh, list here to take a look at uh, Amberella and Marvell for you. Now, or they come out tonight. Is it tonight when they come out with earnings? Yeah, it's going to be this afternoon, but of course, I wouldn't oh. be able to trade anything till tomorrow because I do the options. Got it. Okay. All right. So tomorrow, I'll make sure that uh, we take a look at Amberella. Uh, Amberella looks to me right now like it wants to uh, respond positively to earnings. And the reason that I say that folks here and I'll just switch the uh, template or switch the screens out there so everybody can see what it is that I'm looking at out here we'll see if that comes to fruition tonight but price right now there's an A to B equals CD pattern the upside there's no topping signal that's in place and price yesterday closed above the top of its daily profile trading above it today signaling that it wants to make a move to 1696 the weekly chart looks bullish as well price is above top of the profile for the second week this is suggesting to move up to 69.48 level so my call on Amberella right now would be a move to 1696 to 69.48 and Marvell MRVL is a ticker symbol let's just go ahead and throw that up on the screen here and we'll come back to it tomorrow and see you know whether this came to fruition or not in the case of Marvell out here um, I don't have as it's so what Marvell is doing did yesterday tested a swing point. Let's see. And this is a swing point from November 15th. Did volume of 8.9 million shares at that swing. Yesterday was 7.6. Yes, it was a test and rejection of that swing point. And today so far, you've got the same. The problem with calling that a top, though, is the fact that price is still, it's got strong momentum. It's still above that green oscillator and change line. So I don't have as clear of a signal here on Marvell as we did on Amberella. So we'll come back to that tomorrow uh, for you, Brent. And, uh, See see if there's any trade for you. I appreciate that. Sometimes you just get lucky, like I did with Zoom, where the numbers were good and actually dropped, which is like that's the total gift if you can get that. You know? Sure. Yeah. But I just yeah, I try to be patient. I, I've tried it both ways of doing it beforehand. I just have found that there's so much built-in premium in the options beforehand that it really doesn't. I mean, sometimes it, it'll make a big enough move and yes. exceeds what they were even expecting. But I just in general, I found it's just better to wait. And then, you know, sometimes you, they just run on you. You can't do it. But other times, you, it works out. Yeah. Well, look, thank you for sharing your strategy with all the listeners out there. I know it's much much appreciated. It's always good to speak to you, Brent. And again, we'll take a look at Amberella and um, and uh, Marvell uh, tomorrow morning. So have a terrific Thursday. And we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right. Thank you so much, Steve. Take care. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Now, we've got a couple questions that came in yesterday that we didn't get a chance to get to out there. Stevie was kind of fumbling and bumbling, and it wasn't really the smoothest of shows out there. Uh, today, so far, so good. Uh, let's get to some of those questions that did come in yesterday. And the first one came in from uh, Hector and Patty. And Hector was asking about gold specifically. He was asking about gold priced in all the other major currencies. So I went ahead and I sent him this uh, chart here, but I said that we'd go ahead and share that for you. Now, it's really important. Nancy asked a great question. Nancy asked a question, hey, when you get a topping pattern, doesn't matter whether it's a sell the D point, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, a TD9, whatever it might be, how do you make a determination as to whether you want to go short? Um, and it could do the opposite to, to find a bottom out there. And it's more than just looking at one thing. This is not like City Slickers. And what was the name of that uh, cowboy there? I forget his name. But, you know, it's always just the one thing. Well, when it comes to the stock market, it is not just one thing. Just because you got a signal that says there's a top or bottom, you've got to look at things further. And Hector and Patty were really onto that, trying to understand is the move in gold real or not? How is gold trading in the other major currencies? Because real rallies inside any commodity, in gold specifically, you need to see it rallying on everybody's screen. For example, if you're in Japan right now and you're trading uh, gold in your local currency, yen, you'd be hard pressed to go ahead and short gold in that local currency. Why? We're at a new all time high as we speak right now. Yeah, it's making new all time highs. That's not the case. Now, what I'm looking at here is the GLD versus the um, uh, the gold futures contract. The gold futures contract, that's beautiful to look at, but there's a number of adjustments that have to be made. Even my stitched together future contract doesn't work as uh, as well. 
out there. So I went to the GLD because each of you can do this at home. Now, you may not be able to, on your trading system, uh, convert uh, gold or anything into how it's trading in different uh, currency pairs. But you can see, in the case of gold and euros, really close last month. We're looking at the monthly time frame, just so that you get a bigger picture out here, um, really close to its all-time high, which is 176.40 on the GLD out there. Now, um, make sure, did I switch that over to uh, a second here on the uh, yen? No, I did. Uh, so in the case of yen, it's trading now. You need 27,943 yen to buy one share of the GLD. If we take a look at gold, GLD, in Great British Pounds, it's really not that far away from its all-time high, which is 153.56. So it most certainly in the month of, um, of uh, well, we're in the month of, of November. No, yeah, we're in the month of November. It's really that month of December out there. So here's gold priced in all those major currencies. We'll finish this off when we get back to this, uh, when we come back from this break. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Just to uh, finish off this chart here, the GLD price and all the major, many major currencies out there. We can see that for the month of November, we had gold trading higher in terms of U.S. dollars, flat in terms of euros, basically flat in terms of yen, slightly lower in terms of pounds, higher in terms of Canadian uh, loonies, uh, lower with regard to the Swiss Corona out there. The Swiss franc has been lower. The Chinese yuan has been higher and uh, flat to slightly lower in the Australian. Whereas in the month of October, it was higher in all those major currencies out there. We can see that in terms of U.S. dollars, GLD has hit some trend line resistance out there. So, uh, Hector, thanks so much for it. Patty, thanks so much for waiting an extra day to uh, review that chart. Let's go out to our next caller. It's John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today on Terrific Thursday? Steve, it is a terrific Thursday. Perfect. We like Terrific Thursdays, don't we? And we do. We love them. Steve, and, I'm yes. making an observation about the NASDAQ 100 cash index. Yes. And I'm looking at things bigger picture. I always revert to the cash and eliminate any of the uh, quote-unquote adjustments that needed to be made when dealing with any derivative. So, sure. NDX rallied dramatically, of course, the past four and a half weeks. And after yesterday's high, I think the number was 16,166. Well, we've reversed. Yeah, we've reversed. Uh, and most would say, so what? You know, what's the big deal? Which I would normally concur with. However, after making that high at 16,166 yesterday, this decline is now back under that July 19th top which was, I believe, 15,932, if I'm doing that from memory correctly. So I look at that, and one thing I can tell you, we've seen lots of insider selling picking up going in the past two weeks, while at the same time, retail buying has been huge, and commodity trading advisor, advisory buying has been huge. So we might be viewing a situation where the strong hands are selling out to the weak hands. Yes. So I just make all those observations. I look at this and say this is a potential failure pattern here, up over July 19th, now back under. And, of course, we'll only know in the fullness of time if this is indeed a failure and an important turning point top occurring right here. So uh, since we don't have that fullness of time, I ask you if you can show your work and uh, share with us the levels that would be your first and second and third support levels, and if broken, what those might portend, please. Okay, perfect. So I do have the chart of the NDX 100 up on our screen for us, just so folks can follow along. And inside the NDX 100, what we can see here is this formed a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top was on the trading session of, it was bar number eight, November 22nd out there. So that's the first thing. So you've got a, you've got a top. A Nancy in the Tigers Den asked a question, when you get these topping patterns, how do you decide when to go short? Well, in this case here, with regard to the NDX 100, we had a topping pattern, by the way, that came in and confirmed on November 13th. We didn't take that short at that stage. And one of the reasons we didn't take that short was because price was above this green oscillator and change line. That told us we had a rising price oscillator above zero. If anything, price should have pulled back and tested that level. It did not. In fact, it simply gapped up on November 14th. And it's gone on to make another TD9 count top. Well, today is the first day that we can see here that price is right now trading below that green oscillator and change line. And a close below that, John, that's about 15,944, call it 15,945 out there. A close below that tells us one thing, and that is that the NDX 100 has lost its momentum. Now, maybe we didn't need the stock chart to tell us that, but certainly visually we can see the importance of that oscillator and change line. So that's the first thing that I would, uh, would throw out there. The second thing that we go to is even though we've got that topping signal inside the NDX 100, and another reason we did not go short uh, the NDX on November 10th or November 13th was because we wanted to take a look at the underlying instruments out there. And specifically, we wanted to take a look at the top eight or the Magnificent Seven. So I'll put the Magnificent Seven charts up on our screen. And at that stage, back then when we got that top, we didn't have any kind of real great topping signals inside the other instruments out there. Sure, we had TD9 count patterns, but they were so far away from the oscillator and change line that, again, it became risky to say that was the time to short. 
Well, yesterday, inside of Apple, Apple being the number one instrument inside the NDX 100, about 11 or a little over 11 percent, it generated a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. Now, in the case of Apple, so take a look at an underlying instrument here, the key level of support for Apple is being tested. That key level is 188.29. Now, I may have a little bit of a delay out here. I think we're at about 188.56 or so. No, we're at 188.39 right now. So a level to be watching, John, is going to be 188.29. So we're not even talking about the NDX or the NQ out here. We're starting to take a look at the Magnificent 7 that make up 44% of the weighting, just these seven instruments. And if we get a Apple to close below the bottom of its daily profile, if we open up this chart here, we haven't seen a close below the bottom of a daily profile since October 18th. We've got a close below that, and there was a TD9 count top that had formed uh, prior to that, that told us we were headed lower. In fact, it told us we were headed to 170.82, which we did. We tested that for a few days until we made that TD9 count bottom on October 26. So if we get a close below the bottom of that profile, John, that adds the idea that this is a change in trend, at least for Apple, could be a change in trend than for the NDX 100. Well, Microsoft, which has been strong like a bull, confirmed a TD9 count top two days ago, and yesterday was a Rhodes Mint Indicator top. So the key level here to be watching inside of Microsoft is going to be 367. It would really be 365.16 to the 367 level. That's where price should target, but first it has to get through the, the support level, the top of its profile, that's at 374. So Microsoft isn't as, let's say, potentially bearish as Apple is. Google doesn't have a topping pattern. But price right now is back underneath that green oscillator and change line, back inside its profiles. That suggests 133.27, 131.67. I think it's very important for us to take a look at these instruments that make up such a weighting to get a feel for what their signal is. If we take a look at Amazon, in the case of Amazon, I don't have a top. We just have a consolidation with inside its profiles. It has support at 140.147. Now, that number is really important, folks, because if you get closer below the bottom of profile, that tends to indicate a change in trend in the instrument. We've got a request to take a look at NVIDIA today, I think, from John C. Well, we don't have a top inside of, we don't have a, a topping pattern that I use, John. That doesn't mean we don't have a top. It just means we don't have the pattern that I'm looking for. And if price closes below 464.17 in NVIDIA, that tells us about a change in trend. And that price should then go target 408.69. Tesla, the same kind of thing. I don't have any kind of a topping pattern. As we speak just yet, there's an A to B equals CD, but we don't have the confirmed bearish reversal candle. Nonetheless, price is back below the top of its profile. That was old resistance. Uh, should have become new support. It has not become new support. And this suggests to move to 234.40. Facebook has a TD9 count top. It's giving us a change in trend signal, at least right now. If today closes below 325.70, that tells us we're likely headed to 296.86. So I'd watch these top seven instruments Pay attention, obviously, to Apple, and that would be a place that I would start. We come back from this break here, John. Uh, we'll take a look at the NQ. We'll take a look at what I consider to be the most important chart that has given us a change in trend signal for the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll explain that when we get back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're talking about the NDX 100, or I am just trying to answer uh, John's question about the NDX. And I mentioned there's one chart that I think is the most important chart for us to be looking at that's giving us a change in trend signal. And that happens to be the two-hour time frame chart for the NQ. The reason I come up with that is because the red horizontal lines are TD9 count breakout levels. And we can see here when that first started, we came off the October lows out there. We had a nice rally that set up a TD9 count top that set up 14.306 as a TD9 count breakout level. That was tested about 10 o'clock in the morning back on October 31st, and that held. We've not seen any TD9 count breakout areas hold. There was another one up here at 15.822 that was tested at 12 noon on November the 16th out there. And now what we have is we have a close below, not just parity at 15.981. That tells us from a short-term standpoint to be looking for short trades inside the NDX 100, but price closed below that breakout level at the 15.985.25 level. Let me just get rid of this perigee line. Don't necessarily need to have that out there right there. So you can see that break. Now, what I don't know, John, is what happens when price gets to 15.844.50. That's the next TD9 count breakout level. That is very likely where price is going to head. But what you can see here is we've got a change in trend signal. That's the first change in trend signal. It's a two-hour chart. What's the second change in trend signal? That came yesterday. Somebody asked for me to take a look at the spot politics. I don't remember who that was, but I say thank you to whoever that was because why? When we pulled up the chart out here, we saw that price had not been above that oscillator and change line since the trading session of, give me a moment here, that was a trading session of the October 27, 2023. So nearly for the entire month of November, with the exception being today, November 30th, price remained below that. This is telling me we have a change in trend in the spot volatilities. I had mentioned that uh, uh, Guaro, Garo's um, parabolic SAR system had started forming dots below price, indicating that, okay, that we we likely had a change in trend there. Well, now we're getting a confirmation of that with regard to the spot politics. Now, the S&P hasn't really done very much. In fact, it's off seven points right now, so it's not really done much. We've got both a TD9 count top, we've got a, uh, a Rhodes Mint Indicator top. 
What we don't know is whether the price is going to find support at 45, 41, or thereabouts. Why? Because that's its green oscillator and change line. And so we've just taken a look at that's a level that price would need to break through, just like it did inside the NQ, at least at this stage of the game, to tell us that we've got a change in trend out here. So watch the 45, 41 level for the ES. You weren't talking about the ES, it was just the NQ. But I think I've answered my questions as much as I can with regard to the NQ, what to be looking for. So in the NQ, we definitely have a change in trend signal. We don't have that inside of the Dow. We'd have to go back and take a look at the Dow. But what I want to do here next is get to some of the questions that came in yesterday that we get to and a couple that have come in today. The first one is from COIN. Now, I did send a chart, I believe, to Vicky, who was asking about COIN. And what I was able to share with her yesterday was there was a TD9 count top that was in place. And as any TD9 count top, price should pull back to that oscillator and change line. So we take a look at Roberto COIN. Price should head back to 115 and change. Right now it's 115.80s or so. That number's going to change. If price pulls back and tests that, Vicky, then you've got a, a, a neutral signal. There's a new daily profile that is formed. If price closes below that, price should make a run for support. That would be at 103.15. Resistance, resistance is up at the top of its TD9 count top up there, 131.42. The weekly chart on coin looks really good. The weekly chart says after I'm done pulling back and protesting a support level, I want to make a run to 162.44. However, the monthly chart is saying, are you sure about that, Stevo? And I said to the monthly chart, well, why are you asking me that? The monthly chart responded because I'm going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top this month, today, this evening. So you've got a potential top on the weekly. We definitely have a top on the daily out there. It says just be careful. The weekly, not so much. But And on that TD9 count, it could be the month of December that identifies that top. So you got to watch the daily, watch what it does. But right now it's going to pull back or should pull back and test that oscillator and change on Again, below that, 103.15 and below that. 89.79, and none of those are out of the cards out there. We just have to take things one step at a time. The next request that came in from Vicky as well was for NYCB. Now we take a look at NYCB. NYCB has a Rosemont Dim Indicator signal. We didn't get the bullish reversal candle until yesterday, and yes, there was a gap to the upside, and it closed above the top of its profile. So support here is at 935. Old resistance, the top of its profile, likely becoming new support. If you look at a weekly time frame chart, no bottom signal here. On the monthly time frame chart, no bottom signal here either, although it's a bullish structured zone between 749 and 917. That's a pretty large zone out here. Right now, what would I say about NYCB? I'd say it likely wants to head higher. Those price targets, well, the TD9 count breakdown level where price broke down from was at 1104. The weekly oscillator and change line is up at 1024. I would say those would be the price ranges on a move higher. How confident am I on that move higher? Well, there's a swing point out here from just November the 15th that had volume of 11 million shares, and yesterday's move up above that swing point was 9.8 million shares. Did it actually close above it? It did. So it's not the most convincing. Uh, yesterday was nice, the gap up, but it's not the most convincing thing compared to that prior swing point, and we're trading below that area right now. So maybe we just have a sideways consolidation here out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to both COIN and NYCB. And uh, the chart patterns are easier and better understood when we take a look at COIN. The next request came in from Roger in Colorado, Colorado and Roger wanted to take a look at TSM. Let me make, oh good, I am on the right screen out there. I just want to make sure I at least was doing that. So let's take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM out here. What do we have with it? So what I don't have is a topping pattern per se. The only topping pattern that I have, and I'm going to have to switch charts to show you this to you, just so you can see it and see what I'm looking at, is a descending trend line. And oftentimes getting up to a descending trend line or getting down to a rising trend line can be support. So now we take a look at uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Again, no buy the D, sell the D point pattern, no TD9 count, no Rhodes Mintum indicator top. All we have is a descending trend line, and that is held. And we have a rising trend line, and price right now is starting to trade below that. So I would say if price closes below 97.97 out there, what we're likely to see is a run back to 95.24. And if price were to close below 95.24, we'd see move all the way back down to that next rising trend line, which would get us down towards 85.38. 8538 when we switch panels out here you'd see was a TD9 count breakout level. So that's how we take this one step at a time. 
If I look at the weekly time frame chart, no topping pattern, support is at 95.50, and you just have a consolidation inside the monthly profile. Roger had a secondary question, was to take a look at PANW. So we take a look at Palo Alto Networks out here, PANW, what do we see? We see this thing looks strong like bull. That ain't no bull out there. It's only in bar number seven of a TD9 count. It's got an A to B equals CD pattern in the upside. Uh, let me go and get a price projection. I'll do that off screen here. I'll use one of my other tools to do that. And the A to B, I'm not being exact here, but I'm pretty, pretty darn close. Looks like the one to one gets us around 298.88 out there. Now, if actually what I need to do is change screens. So give me a moment here. Let's just change the screens because I'm talking about the A to B equals CD pattern. And what I'm about to say, you need to kind of visually see. So here's the A to B equals CD. Now there's several A to B equals CD patterns. I'm using the one that's the most conservative, the most recent one. By the way, the swing point had volume of around 3 million shares. It was passed with 6 million shares. Look at how price is along the C to D leg out there. What are the odds that you think this only does a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the upside? I'd say the odds are very small. And instead, more likely, 316.49 is the price target area for Palo Alto Networks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, well, folks. We won't be able to get to all the requests that came in. Those that we don't get to, we will certainly uh, do tomorrow uh, for you. Let's uh, see what we can do here. Peter wanted to take a look at the uh, currency pairs out there. 
We're looking at the three currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar, that make up the, port, the significant portion of the U.S. dollar index. We've got the euro right here over in the upper left-hand panel. The euro has a wave number seven top out there. The dollar has a wave seven bottom. We discussed that during the 11 a.m. Up, uh, update. Right now, Peter, we can see that price is trading below that oscillator and change line. That's at 1.09295. A close below that tells us the euro rally has lost its momentum and is likely to move lower. We take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. It still continues to find support in this swing point area, the swing points that were established by the lows from the uh, early October 3rd level out here, the uh, level down here on November 21st. This might be targeting the oscillator and chains on If it does that, it's getting weaker. The U.S. dollar index would get stronger. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, the Great British Pound has an A to B equals CD pattern. We're looking at perhaps a three river evening star. That's identifying a top. That suggests that the pound wants to at least make a, a movement or a retracement down to 1.2573. That suggests that the U.S. dollar index is going to continue to rally. Now, we're looking at the daily charts. We're not looking at the intraday charts out there, but that's the signals coming from those three currency pairs. Now, if we continue to rally out here, that should put some pressure certainly on the metals not necessarily putting pressure on the stocks out there. We didn't get a chance to cover that chart. We'll try to do that tomorrow and to share that with you. Uh, the next request was to take a look at NVIDIA out there. We sort of covered that, but let me just go back to it real quickly here. With regard to NVIDIA, it's likely targeting 464.17 out there. Uh, there may be an A to B equal CD to the downside. The volume here was uh, 90 million shares on that swing point today. So far, we're at 20 million shares. That looks to me like light volume. Uh, no top here, just a consolidation in NVIDIA. I'd be watching 464.17. That should hold as support. Uh, next request was to take a look at Walmart. It's the last one we'll be able to get to here. With regard to Walmart, what do we have? We have a wave seven top. Big, huge gap to the downside. And I don't have a real clear picture here on Walmart. So we'll come back to Walmart tomorrow. EN phase for Sat P, Tesla for Nicholas, Las Vegas Sands for Nicholas, and XPEV for someone who writes in, but I don't have any clue what that individual's name is. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Be safe out there.